Batman the Ride is one of the best clone coaster models out there. Each clone is an inverted coaster built by Bollinger and Maviard, or B&M, and these are found at a lot of Six Flags parks. Not all of them go by the name Batman the Ride, as you have rides like Goliath at Six Flags Fiesta Texas or Great White at Zero San Antonio. To keep things simple during this video, I'll just refer to this ride model as Batman. Despite having different names and some even being mirrored images of one another, they all have the same layout. I think this is one of the best coasters for intensity, and after riding the one at Six Flags Great Adventure this past summer, I've done every single Batman clone in the US. I have a good feel for this ride model, and I'll be discussing my thoughts on it in today's review. As usual, let's first get into the stats. Despite having the same track layout, the stats differ between a few of the Batman clones. The height for a lot of them is 105 feet, but the one at Six Flags Great America stands 100 feet tall, and Great White stands 108 feet tall. The track length is also different for some of them. Most of these are 2,700 feet long, but the one at Six Flags St. Louis, along with Goliath and Great White, are all shorter in track length. Each of them have a max speed of 50 miles an hour, and have 5 inversions. These stats aren't anything to go crazy over, but Batman shows that smaller stats don't run the ride. For each park that has a clone of Batman the ride, the location of this coaster is also different. Most of them are located in a DC themed area, but you have some exceptions to that. Plus, they seem to be located in different areas throughout the park. Some are located towards the front, while others are towards the back. Regardless of where they're located, they're hard to miss because they have a loud roar. One of the things that people often talk about with this ride is how massive the queue line is, and it's insane just how long some of them are. Some are shorter than others, but in general, these queues are a hike, so prepare to do some walking. The bright side is that some of these queue lines provide amazing views of the coaster, making for some cool photo ops while waiting in line. The ones at Six Flags St. Louis and Six Flags Great America stand out to me here. There's also some decent theming through some of the queue lines too, especially with the damaged police car on the one at Six Flags Great America. A lot of this queue takes place inside a long tunnel, and if the line for any of these coaches is long, which it often is, it's not fun to be in there for too long because it often gets quite hot. Once you get into the station, you can choose any row you'd like. I think the best seat depends on what forces you value more. If you want more whip, I think the back row is the place to be. If you want more positives, I think the front is a bit better for that. Either way, both of those types of forces are excellent in the front and the back, and you can't go wrong with either row. Once you board your train, you're greeted with your typical B&M over-the-shoulder harnesses. These are found on countless B&M loopers out there, and they usually don't cause me any issues with headbanging. I say usually because some Batman clones definitely run better than others, and after I go through the ride experience, I'll briefly rank all of them. Speaking of ride experience, let's go over what riding this coaster model is like. Once you depart the station, you start ascending the lift hill. In typical B&M invert fashion, this lift hill is loud, so good luck being able to hear the people next to you. Once at the top, the train goes over a pre-drop and then goes down a curved first drop. Most of these Batman clones drop to the left, but a few drop to the right. This drop is awesome in the back of the train, as you get pulled down by the rest of it, providing a great gut punch. Batman then flips its riders into the first of five inversions, which is a vertical loop. Up front, you get some really strong positives going into it, and in the back, you get a good mix of positives and whip coming out of it. Next is a zero-g roll, and the amount of whip on this element is insane in the front and the back. A second vertical loop follows that, and this one rides similar to the first one. Batman is hauling by this point, and you speed through an upwards helix. This element is definitely better in the front because the positives feel way stronger up there. I always gray out up front, and I don't feel the same intensity in the back. Before I go any further, I should mention that the only Batman clone I've written in the back row is the one in Six Flags and Lewis, since it's at my home park. I don't know how the back row on each of the other ones feel in terms of the helix, but from the front row on each of them, this helix is among the most intense element in each park. After this helix, you navigate a brief section of the straight track, and you may or may not get a chance to catch your breath here. It depends on which one you're riding and how fast it's running. The train then turns around before flying into the first wing over, which is basically a corkscrew. You get insane positives and whip in the front and the back. Batman makes another sharp turn and then enters a second wing over, this one being in the opposite direction. This one provides the exact same forces as the prior one. Both wing overs in quick succession are the best part of the ride in my opinion. The second wing over is your last inversion, and the train turns up into the brake run, concluding your ride experience on this awesome BNM invert. I'm usually out of breath by the time I hit the brake run on this ride, and it's an endurance test. Before I give this coaster model a final score, I'll briefly rank each of the Batman clones I've written and discuss some of the differences between them. At the bottom of the list number 8, I have the one at Six Flags over Texas. This one was the least intense of them all, and was by far the roughest Batman clone I've written. I actually got some headbanging on this one, and this didn't happen on the others. Number 7 is the one at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. This is one of two I've written that isn't named Batman, as it's called Goliath, and I think this is the only Batman clone with seven row trains. This made it feel less intense than the one ranked higher. It did have a rattle to it, but this one was significantly smoother than the one at Six Flags over Texas. Number six is the one at SeaWorld San Antonio. This one is called Great White, making it the other one I've written that isn't called Batman. This was by far the smoothest of the eight I've written. It didn't quite have the same intensity as the one ranked higher than it, but the smoothness is what puts it at number six. Number five is the one at Six Flags Great Adventure. This was the last one in the US that I needed to ride, and it felt identical to Great White in terms of smoothness while being more intense. Plus, it got repainted recently, and it looks great. Number four is the one at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This was my second Batman clone, and it's the one I haven't ridden in the longest time, having ridden it in 2018. Ryan rode this one in 2022, and he said it had a rattle, but I didn't have that issue. This is also one of two Batman clones actually named Batman that's blue for whatever reason. Number three is the one at Six Flags Great America. This was the original BNM invert, and some call it the best Batman clone because of its setting. I totally get that, as dodging the trees around the ride made it feel more intense than the other ones I've mentioned so far. Number two is the one at Six Flags St. Louis. This is the one I've ridden the most, and while you could call this ranking home park 
bias, I have it at number two because it's been running off the wall insane as of late. The intensity has frequently been higher than Six Flags Great Americas, even without the terrain. In fact, the intensity is sometimes so high that it even rivals the one I have on top. And at this point, I think it should be obvious which one it is. This is the only Batman clone I've ridden with a black color scheme, and I think this fits the best of all the other color schemes on these rides. Finally, the best Batman clone I've ridden, and this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone, is the one at Six Flags Over Georgia. If you were to ask the average enthusiast which Batman clone they think is the best, this is most likely the one they'll say, and it's easy to see why. This one runs way too fast through its course, and I don't know what exactly causes it to run like that. Even though I've only ridden Six Flags Over Georgia's Batman clone in empty trains due to it always being a walk-on from my experience, it felt way more intense than all the other ones for the full train. When a ride runs like that, it should be easy to understand why Six Flags Over Georgia has far and away the best Batman clone I've ridden, although it's painted blue like Magic Mountains, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. In terms of what I'd give Batman the ride for a final score, I'm not going to give each individual clone a separate score, even though some run much better than others. Overall, I think this model is deserving of an 8 out of 10. This is a very solid coaster model that I think should get more praise. I've heard a good number of people say Batman is the weakest BNM member just because of the clone and nothing else. I personally disagree with that train of thought. I think Batman is a good example of how a coaster isn't worse than other rides of that type just because it's a clone. I also know that several people do enjoy Batman clones, even though there are multiple of them. I'm almost wondering if more people would enjoy Batman clones if there were fewer of them out there now that I think about it. If you want an example of that, just look at Mr. Freeze. There's only two of those out there, and both are considered by many enthusiasts as the top two or three coasters in their respective parks, and not the number one coaster in the park. As for where each clone ranks on my list of 294 coasters, they are as follows from top to bottom. Six Flags Over Georgia, 78. Six Flags St. Louis, 87. Six Flags Great America, 96. Six Flags Magic Mountain, 103. Six Flags Great Adventure, 113. Sea World San Antonio, 155. Six Flags Fiesta Texas, 207. And Six Flags Over Texas, 222. That's a difference of 144 spots between my least favorite Batman clone and my personal favorite Batman clone, but the model itself is really good regardless of each individual placement. Those are just my thoughts on each of the Batman the Ride clones I've written. What do you think about this clone coaster model, and how does it compare to other BNM inverts? Do you have them ranked towards the top, at the bottom, or somewhere in between? I'm also wondering if you rent any of these when they ran a train backwards. I did the one in Six Flags St. Louis backwards twice in 2018, and it was disorienting. Post any thoughts you have about either of those topics in the comment section. Also, be sure to let me know what coaster you want me to review, and I'll see if I can do it. Of course, before you click off this video, please be sure to leave a like if you haven't done so already. Be sure to comment what you enjoyed about this video, and be sure to share it with someone else you may know. If you're new to this channel, like what you saw, please consider subscribing for more content like this. I'd appreciate you subscribing and turning the bell on so you get notified every time I upload a new video. I also have an Instagram account for the pictures I take whenever I visit a park, so be sure to check me out there as well via the link in the description. Thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you later.